Good day, my dear children. Today, something awesome is about to happen. Let's have fun while we learn English. This is Teacher Jaw at his service. Before anything else, don't forget your self-learning modules or SLM. Today, we're going to learn about paragraphs. Do you know what a paragraph is? If not, don't worry because Teacher Joe will help you understand everything about paragraphs. Please do this drill which will let you distinguish a paragraph from a non-paragraph. Write a check mark if the group of sentences is a paragraph and an X mark if it is not. Paragraph number one. My school is one of the largest in our province. We have over 2,000 students. To accommodate all of us, our school had to have 45 classrooms. For now, we only have 30 classrooms. Some classes occupy makeshift classrooms. Our principal is working hard to have more classrooms built so that students and teachers will be comfortable. Paragraph number two. Every bus needs a driver. Buses are not cheap. Different kinds of buses ply our streets. They bring people to different destinations. A lot of people come to our place to do business, shop, and while away their time. It is really warm today. Paragraph number three. My family and I went to the wildlife park. It is one of the most visited places in our city. It houses snakes, birds, lions and tigers, and even crocodiles. My favorite toy is a train which goes up and down a hill. And for the last paragraph, number four. Our teacher had a baby. So, we have a substitute teacher, Miss Rojas. She is nice and funny. We always enjoy when she comes to our class. She makes us laugh with her jokes. She allows us to play outside once in a while. She also teaches well. For paragraph number one, if you wrote a check mark, then you are right. Paragraph number one focuses on a single idea, which is about my school. For paragraph number two, if you wrote an X mark, then you are correct. Number two paragraph does not focus on a single idea. For paragraph number three, if you wrote an X mark, good job! Paragraph number three does not focus on a single idea. And for the last paragraph, if you wrote a check mark, then you are correct. Number four paragraph focuses on a single idea, which is about our substitute teacher. I have here four pictures, and these pictures have one thing in common. Can you guess what the word is? Here's another clue. Most of these are found in the school library. If your answer is book or books, then you got it. So, do you love books? What is your favorite book then? There are so many kinds of books in the world. And here are some of them. This is a picture book. It is a book containing pictures, like these. This is a fantasy book. A fantasy book tells stories often inspired by real-world myth and folklore. And this is a biography book. It is a detailed description of a person's life. Today, we are going to read a paragraph about books. But before that, let us first answer the crossword puzzle using the words that we will encounter when we read the paragraph. 
Do you have what it takes to be a word master? These are the words. Preserve. Unravel. Printing. Manuscript. Parchment. Papyrus. Compact. Scrolls. Durable. Essential. Codex. Mahayana. Ancient. All you have to do is select the word that is being described. Don't worry, because I will be giving you examples on the words that can be used in a sentence. Are you ready? Here are the clues. Let's start with down. Item number one. Five letters. It is an ancient manuscript text in book form. My grandmother owns a that she likes to read. Number three, seven letters. This word means lasting or unbreakable. This table is so that it can't easily be damaged. Number four, eight letters. It means to keep up or maintain. We need to our history because it is what makes us Filipinos. Number five, eight letters. It is a word used to refer to the production of books, newspaper, and other printed materials. Be sure to check your article for errors before it. Number seven, eight letters. It is a branch of Buddhism. I have a Chinese friend who shares stories about his religion. Number nine, seven letters. It is a roll of parchment or paper that can be used to write on or paint on. For our project in English, we were assigned to write slogans on Number 11 Seven letters This word means very old or having existed for a long time Even in the times, Filipinos already had tattoos And number 12, it means to separate into parts. In our science class, we had to the parts of a flower and identify each one of them. We're halfway there. Let's proceed to the words under across. Number two, nine letters. It is a stiff, flat, thin material for writing. I like to use papers for my journal. Number six, seven letters. It is a plant used during the ancient times as a writing surface. The Egyptians used the Plant to make writing sheets. Number eight, seven letters. This word means joined or packed together. My bag is more than yours, so it's easier for me to carry it. We're almost there. Number 10. Nine letters. It means important. 
it is to review our lesson so we won't fail the exam. And for the last item, number 13, it is a book, document, or piece of music written by hand. Can you give me the about the story we read last week? Kids, do you think you got the right answers? Let's check and put the correct words inside the boxes. Let's start with down. Number one, the ancient manuscript text in book form is called Codex. Number three, the words lasting and unbreakable are equivalent to the word durable. Number four, to keep up or maintain also means to preserve. Number five, the production of books, newspapers, and other printed materials is simply called printing. Number seven, one branch of Buddhism is Mahayana. Number nine, rolls of parchment or papers used to write on and paint on are called scrolls. Number 11, the word that means very old or having existed for a long time is ancient. Number 12, to separate into parts means to unravel. How are your scores going so far, kids? Now, let's do a cross. Number 2, the stiff, flat, thin material used for writing is called parchment. Number 6, the plant used in the ancient times as a writing surface is called the papyrus. Number 8, the word which means joint or packed together is compact. Number 10, the word important is similar to the word essential. And last but not the least, number 13. A book, a document, or a piece of music written by hand is called manuscript. Were you able to answer our crossword puzzle correctly? In case you encounter the words and you forgot their meaning, you can always go back to this puzzle. Now remember that those words we learned in the crossword puzzle will help you understand well the paragraph that we will read. But what is a paragraph? A paragraph is made up of sentences focusing on a single idea. Here are two paragraphs as examples. Kids, you have to read the paragraphs with teacher Joe, okay? Books are the oldest source of information. Even before the radio was invented, books we're already able to provide information to people around the world. They have been an essential part of the human life in telling stories, preserving history, and sharing information about our world. There have been various types of books. The first ever recognized books were the ancient scrolls. These are rolled up manuscripts made from papyrus plants and ranges from 14 to 52 feet wide when unraveled. The second type of book was the book to go of the Romans. More similar to the style of books today, the Romans created some of the first codices from as early as the first century common era. The codex was more durable and compact than a scroll as it was made with parchment paper and bound with wooden covers. Information is important. That's why books are considered a necessity for everyone. This resulted to books being printed. The first recorded printed book in history is the Diamond Sutra of Mahayana Buddhism. Books in schools are all products of printing. Today, Books can also be in electronic form or ebook. It is the most convenient type of book 
And as long as you have a gadget, you can read anywhere you are and anytime you want. A book may change forms over time, but it will always be one of the best sources of vast information that we need. Were you able to understand the paragraphs that we have read? Let us now try to answer the following questions based on what we have read. If you have been a well reader, you'll be able to answer these. What is the source of information mentioned in the paragraph? The answer to the question would be books. Next question. What are the types of books? Based from the second paragraph, there have been various types of books like ancient scrolls, codex, modern printed books, and electronic books or e-books. How does each type of book differ from the other? These books differ in terms of how they are made. The ancient scrolls are made out of the papyrus plant. Codices are made up of parchment papers bound with wooden covers. The books that we have today are printed by machine. And the e-books are made electronically and you can read them on gadgets. Question number four. Why do we need books? We need books simply to get information that we need. As mentioned in the first paragraph, they tell stories, preserve history, and share information about our world. And for the last number, the question is, how do we imagine our world without books? It may be a vast, lonely, and ignorant world we may be living in without books. Can you imagine a world without stories about ships, plants, and animals, famous people, fairy tales, and even our own planet too? But good thing there are books, whatever types they are, for us to enjoy and read on. So, did you have fun learning our lesson for today? In our next lesson, we will be learning more about paragraph and its parts. It's going to be fun and exciting acquaintance once again, that's for sure. But for now, let me leave you with this quote from Dr. Seuss. The more you read, the more things you'll know. The more that you learn, the more places you'll go. So just continue practice reading. Once again, let's have fun while we learn English. This is Teacher John, at your service. I'll see you on our next lesson. Bye!